This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 9th day of May in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. As teachers restarted their strike action today, the president of the Ghana Teachers Union, Mark Light, reported that based on reports reaching the union, more than 60% of the nation's teachers stayed away from school today as the strike action resumed over the government's failure to engage the union in collective bargaining for a wage package for teachers in the public education system. The strike, which started back in February, resumed after a two-month hiatus, and some three weeks after the High Court ruled that the Ministry of Education and the government failed to engage the GTU in collective bargaining. In an interview today, the GTU President Mark Light said the result of the government's refusal to sit with the union to negotiate a proposed multi-year agreement for the period 2019 to 2023, even after the High Court ruling, is a closure of a number of schools as the strike resumes. From the reports we've gathered, we have significant number of teachers who remain at home as advised. Um, I believe there's upwards 60% of our, our teachers remain at home. Um, several schools are closed and as advice, um, the head teachers would have taken the letters, um, their keys, in fact, to the Department of Education in the various regions. We have reports that several schools have been completely shut and um, in all the regions this has happened. When New Source visited a number of schools in the city today, many of them were found with empty classrooms. Others had just a few children as teachers stayed away from schools. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Shania Hussein Uttar, upon being notified by the union of its planned strike action, expressed surprise on behalf of the government. But Light said the Education Ministry and the government were warned that the failure to engage a union on the proposed agreement would result in strike action. But we've been saying this for a long time, that the strike action is likely to resume. Um, we hope that the ministry and by extension the government would have taken heed to that and actually uh, reach out to the union for the talks to, to resume. We have not seen that until we submitted the letter to the PS about our resumption, um, we got a response for the first time after the court hearing. The government has signaled a willingness to engage a union on a new proposal covering this year and beyond, but lights to the union will not shift from its position. We remain resolute um, on our position that it has to be 2019, 2023. Those are the, uh, that is the proposal we have submitted and that is a proposal we're ready to engage them in talks. The GTU president said the union suspects that the government is buying time to allow for another imposition of salaries at the end of the year. But the union is prepared to up the pressure as it remains resolute in its position. Teachers are expected to remain at home tomorrow before hitting the streets next week if there is no early resolution to the issue. However, the GTU president remains hopeful that the government will come to the negotiating table sooner rather than later, warning that children will be losing critical hours of learning should the government fail to address the concerns of the nation's teachers. More news is coming up in just a moment. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more.
knows no boundaries of time. It transcends the ages, forever etching its mark on our hearts. Super Stylistics, in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport and the Government of Guyana, present Timeless Love, the 31st production of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024 at the National Cultural Center. A celebration of a unique family bond and flawless flamboyant fashion. Glitz, glamour and grand giveaways for lucky patrons too at the 2024 Mother and Daughter Pageant. National Cultural Center, May 11 from 20 hours, preluded by red carpet. Tickets six, five, five, and $5,000. It's Timeless Love. The Ministry of Housing and Water Central Housing and Planning Authority is in the process of addressing all applicants with acknowledgement letters dated 2019 and prior. To efficiently and transparently address applicants within this period, we have introduced an online platform. However, allocations will be done based on the availability of house lots in the respective regions. The Ministry will schedule allocation dates for applicants outside of Region 4 in the respective regions. To access this online platform, visit our website hai.chpa.gov.gy and fill out the required fields, then submit by clicking on the Search Housing Application tab. A notification will then pop up on your screen indicating whether your application was found in our database. This will be followed by a pop-up screen with your basic personal information and an option to make changes to your contact number if applicable or if there is any change in your preference for land or a built housing unit. After that information is submitted, you will be notified immediately that the process was successful with a message saying you will be contacted for an allocation based on availability. If an application is not found, it means your application does not fall within the date and you can contact the office at 706-5730 for any inquiries. This is a message from the Central Housing and Planning Authority. Well, two U.S. Navy Super Hornet flight jets conducted a flyover of Georgetown and surrounding areas today in collaboration with the Gallant Defense Force. In a statement, the U.S. Embassy said the two jets are based on the USS George Washington. The embassy also said the exercise builds upon the U.S. government's routine security cooperation and bilateral defense partnership with Guyana. As part of its worldwide defense mission, U.S. Navy vessels routinely transit international waters all over the world, conducting similar exercises and exchanges with partners and allies, the embassy noted. Well, hours after two U.S. fighter jets conducted a flyover of Georgetown with support of the government of Guyana and the Guyana Defense Force, the Venezuelan government objected to the exercise, describing it as a provocation. In a statement, the Minister of Defense of Venezuela, Vladimir Padrino Lopez, described the U.S. military exercise in Guyana as repeated provocations by the U.S. military Southern Command. He said the National Armed Forces of Venezuela strongly rejects the repeated provocations by the Southern Command, sponsored by the government of Guyana, which according to him has assumed the role of a new North American colony. The Venezuelan official reported that the comprehensive aerospace defense system of Venezuela remains activated in the event of any attempt to violate Venezuelan geographic space, including Guyana's Essequibo region, which Venezuela continues to claim as its own. The U.S. government has made known its full support of Guyana in the ongoing border controversy, which is currently before the international court. The U.S. Southern Command over the years has hosted a number of joint military exercises with Guyana. Prime Minister Mark Phillips reported today that the Guyana Power and Light Company has made significant progress in connecting that power ship to the national grid, with testing now completed. In an interview with reporters outside the National Assembly, Prime Minister Phillips indicated that with testing completed, power from the ship will soon be transmitted and distributed to consumers across the country through the Demerara Burbies interconnected system. Everything is perfect on the power ship. They run all the tests and everything. It's just a matter of starting evacuating the power out to all over Guyana now. Speak to Mr. Nar Nar speak to Mr. Um, Nigel. Um, what was them? Catch Danilal, and he give you all the details. But everything is going as planned so far. In a statement earlier today, the power company GPL said, together with the car power ship, it has completed testing the engines, transformers, fuel, metering, and telecommunication systems on the power ship. 
According to the local power company, engineers are currently finalizing testing of the protection relay devices to ensure there is communication between the ship and GPL supervisory control and data acquisition system. That system will monitor and control the power distribution network to ensure efficiency and system reliability. It said once completed, the team will commence dispatching power from the power ship to the grid. The power will be injected into the Demerara Burbis interconnected system incrementally, beginning with Burbis and continuing throughout the various load centers in Demerara. At his weekly press conference today, Vice President Barra Jagdeo said the increase in power is expected to bring much relief to the people across the country. Hoping that with the 36 megawatts now added to the system, that we'd be able, we'd have enough power in the system to end the current spate of blackouts, which come from unavailability of power. There may be isolated systems because of the transmission, the poor transmission and distribution system. But where we have to deliberately have load shedding as happened in the past several months, couple of months, because there was simply not enough power to meet peak demand. So the 36 megawatts would allow us to meet peak demand and even allow us to go um, into maintenance of some of the additional units that had where their maintenance was deferred simply because they, we had no other capacity. The government paid one million US dollars in mobilization fees to secure the power ship and will now be required to pay a charter fee of 6.62 US cents per kilowatt hour in addition to an operation and maintenance fee of 0 0.98 US cents per kilowatt hour based on the agreement signed between GPL and the Orbicon Concessions Investment Company from Qatar. Purple Arts Productions presents a treat for my mother seven. On Mother's Day, Sunday, May 12, Herbie Marshall and Strings, Barbara Lee, Leon Walton, Ian Nelson, and others. Golden jewelry for the best dressed mother in purple. 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets $3,2500. Compliments NDMS Furniture Store, Little Cake Creations. Essential Care Pharmacy, Sunflower Jewelry. A Purple Arts Theater Production. Mobile One is more than oil. It's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Salgan is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants. Peters Hall residents rejecting government's offer for the acquisition of their properties for the construction of that new Demerara River Bridge, the government will now turn to the courts to determine a final compensation for the affected residents.
On the sidelines of today's sitting of the National Assembly, Minister of Public Works Juan Agil said the government through the Attorney General's Chamber is in the process of initiating legal action now that the order for compulsory acquisition has been gazetted and has taken effect. Some people, after hard negotiations, have accepted government's final order, final offer, sorry. Let me tell you what the offer entails. People who have commercial business, getting commercial lands elsewhere. Residential, getting residential lands elsewhere. And a sum of money that will deal with dislocation and all the rest of it. Persons who had to move almost immediately or they have to move and they don't have a place yet to go in because they have to fix on the new land that they're getting, helping them with rental for facilities and all the rest of it. The works minister explained that the offers made by the government were based on expert valuations done and followed a series of consultations with the affected residents covering a two-year period as provided for under the law. He also said the government is cognizant that while under the constitution and the laws, it can acquire property for the public good, the law requires that persons be consulted and compensated at fair market price. He said after two years of consultations, offers were made based on fair market price. And while 15 persons have objected to those offers, six persons have agreed to a settlement. We have said to those who disagree with what was the government offer, you have a valuation, we have a valuation. We are making an offer, you are making an offer, we don't agree. The law provides that a judge will determine what will be the price the government needs to pay to ensure that the person that violated or um, robbed or cheated. So we will approach a judge by way of an application to the court and the judge will determine the outcome. The government is still engaging some 19 other residents for the acquisition of their properties. A number of residents from the Peters Hall area have called on the government to present them with a fair deal. They complain that consultations have not been taking place and they feel as though they are being bullied out of their homes. Turning our attention now to the oil and gas sector, Guyana earned $126 billion in oil revenues during the first quarter of this year. According to a document laid in the National Assembly today by Minister with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh. The document titled Government Notice was presented to the House in accordance with Section 33.2 of the Natural Resource Fund Act 2021 which mandates the government to give notice of the receipts of all petroleum revenues paid into the Natural Resource Fund. The document shows that from January 2, 2024 to March 25, 2024, the government received payments totaling $126 billion for seven lifts of profit oil, with two of those lifts dating back to last year. This sum also includes the payment of royalties amounting to $13.26 billion for oil production in the fourth quarter of last year. Additionally, the document confirms that with regards to oil lifts, Guyana received just over $15.3 billion on the 2nd of January for a lift of profit oil executed in December of last year from the Laser Unity FPSO. And later on the 2nd of February, the country received $15.95 billion for another lift, which was executed on the 3rd of January from the same FPSO. On the 2nd of February, Guyana received $15.7 billion into the Natural Resource Fund for the lift of profit all executed on the 3rd of January from the Prosperity FPSO. And late in February, the country received $15.7 billion for a lift executed in December of 2023 from the Lisa Unity. The other three lifts were executed between the 5th of February and the 24th of February, with funds totaling $17.02 billion, $16.34 billion, and $17.1 billion, being deposited into the National Resource Fund between the 6th of March and the 25th of March for lifts executed from the Lisa Unity FPSO, the Prosperity, and the Lisa Destiny. Profit oil receipts are derived from Government of Ghana lifts of crude oil earned as profit. Additionally, royalties are paid on a quarterly basis, 30 days following the end of each calendar quarter. Three men were charged for disorderly conduct and granted bail in connection with their behavior at a police roadblock.
Businessman Paul Davy Jr., Sherwin Diabru, and Alpha Pool all appeared in court yesterday and were charged for a number of offenses, including disorderly behavior and using abusive language. The prosecutor told the court that last Monday night the three verbally abused police ranks when their vehicles were stopped as part of a police operation. Davey was charged with disorderly behavior, motor vehicle causing obstruction, and five counts of abusive language. He pleaded not guilty to the charges and was granted bail in a sum of $30,000 on each of those charges. Sherwin Diabro and Alpha Pool were both charged with disorderly behavior and five counts of abusive language each. They also pleaded not guilty and were granted bail in a sum of $50,000 each. The three will make their next court appearance later this month. Purple Arts Productions presents a treat for my mother's seven on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 12. Sean Bullock, Bernie Alves, Charmaine Black, Ronald Green, and others. Golden jewelry for the best dressed mother in purple. 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets $3,2500. Compliments of supplies of shopping trumpets. The simple training. Secure innovations at Concept Inc. A Purple Arts Theatre production, directed by Simone Dowding. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. Our commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, and other important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia Oil has now repositioned itself as a market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Holiday spending put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over five million dollars, including over one million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Buster, Turbo, Fruta, Cool Kids, or Viva. Look for all the eight-digit code starting with seven eight six. Then visit Facebook or IG at Buster Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. Across the region tonight, persistent heavy rainfall in parts of Antigua prompted the authorities today to extend the flash flood advisory. The Antigua and Barbuda Meteorological Services initially issued the advisory just after 11 this morning. It was expected to end at 2 this afternoon, but it was later extended following several heavy downpours. Residents have been cautioned across the islands about possible minor flooding in low-lying and flood-prone areas. The advisory in Antigua also warned of elevated streams, creeks and drains which could overflow into streets and low-lying areas. While residents have already noted signs of flooding, property damage is expected to be minimal. The flooding is not expected to pose an immediate threat to life, but meteorological services in Antigua highlighted that just one foot of flowing water is sufficient to sweep vehicles off the road. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights is calling on all Caribbean countries that still maintain forms of criminalization that interfere in aspects related to the private lives of individuals to repeal such laws that facilitate their persecution. 
In a statement, the international body said, in addition, the states of the region are urged to continue advancing the social inclusion and real equality of LGBTI people. The international human rights body reaffirmed its commitment to states and civil society organizations to assist in the processes to create a legal framework that protects LGBTI persons from all forms of violence and discrimination. The international human rights body called on all regional states to repeal legislation that facilitates the persecution of LGBTI persons in any form and that encourages acts of violence due to prejudice and discrimination. And finally tonight, international news. Ambassadors from EU member states have agreed in principle to seize windfall profits from frozen Russian assets to finance arms supplies to Ukraine. In wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, EU countries froze hundreds of billions of euros worth of assets. If the decision is approved at the gathering of EU finance ministers next week, the interest worth up to 3 billion euros per year will be used to buy weapons for Ukraine. The European Commission chief said there could be no stronger symbol and no greater use for that money than to make Ukraine and all of Europe a safer place to live. The European Trade Commissioner also welcomed the decision. He said the funds would have to get to Ukraine as soon as possible, with the first 1 billion euros tranche to be used mainly for military support, ideally reaching the country by this summer. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to have a safe and enjoyable night.